Question 5.1 consists of three maps and plans questions that were designed to assess your understanding of flight route maps, compass direction on maps, and map scales. You are given a scenario where the Air Link offers a service to travelers to visit many domestic and regional destinations as shown on the flight route map. You are given the direction of north which points to the top of the page. The red dots on the map indicate cities that the flights will depart from and arrive to. And the black lines represent the flight path of the aeroplanes. In question 5.1, you are instructed to write down the compass direction that the person would follow if the person takes a flight from Johannesburg to Darul Islam and goes to Pemba. From Johannesburg to Darul Islam, the person will be traveling in a northeasterly direction, and from Darul Islam to Pemba, the person will be traveling in a southeast direction. In question 5.1.2, according to a pilot, the flight distance from Johannesburg to Antananarivo is 1,328 miles. You will have to show by means of calculation that the scale of the flight route map is 1 to 33,393,898 if the measured distance from Johannesburg to Antananarivo on the map is 64 millimeters. You may use the conversion factor 1 km equals 0, 0,621371 miles. From the conversion factor of 1 km equals 0, 0,621371 miles, we can convert 1,328 miles to kilometers. So 1,328 miles equals 1,328 divided by 0, 0,62137 miles per kilometer, and this equals 2,137,209493 kilometers. The reason why we want to convert the distance from miles to kilometers is that the map distance is given in millimeters, and both kilometers and millimeters are in the metric system. Eventually, we want to convert the distance from Johannesburg to Antananarivo from kilometers to millimeters. We do this in order to write the scale of the route map as a ratio scale. Now, to convert the distance from Johannesburg to Antananarivo from kilometers to millimeters, we are going to have to use the conversion factor of 1 million millimeters equal 1 kilometer. So 2137,209493 kilometers equals 2137,209493 multiplied by 1 million millimeters per kilometer and this equals a distance from Johannesburg to Antananarivo in millimeters of 2,137,209,493 millimeters. Now writing the map distance to actual distance as a ratio will give us a ratio of 64 millimeters to 2,137,209,493 2 millimeters. Now dividing both sides of this ratio by 64 millimeters will give us a ratio scale of this flight route map of 1 to 33,393,898. In question 513, you are instructed to describe the shortest flight route if a person wants to travel from Tata to Valfus Bay using the available flight route shown on the map. From the flight route map, we see that the shortest flight route for a person who wants to travel from Tata to Valfus is to take a flight to Johannesburg and then take a connecting flight to Valfus from there. Question 5.2 consists of two measurement questions and one maps and plan question that were designed to assess your understanding of speed, time and distance calculation and temperature conversion in the context of a travel schedule. It is stated that the African Cup of Nations match between Burundi and Cameroon took place on the 8th of June 2022 in Darul Islam. Buyo and his two friends planned long in advance to go watch the game. You are given an extract of the flight ailing schedule from Johannesburg to Darul Islam and back. In question 521, you are instructed to determine the number of days on which no flights are scheduled to go to Darul Islam 
if Monday is the first day of the week. According to this frequency schedule from the flight schedule in Table 3, Monday is the first day of the week or number 1 in the frequency table. 7 would be the last day of the week, which would be Sunday. So from this frequency table, we see that there are two numbers missing, which are number 2 and number 6. So this means that on the second and the sixth day of the week, there will be no flight schedule to take place between Darul Islam and Johannesburg, or from Johannesburg to Darul Islam. So if Monday is the first day of the week, then the two days that there will be no flight schedule would be Tuesday and Saturday. In question 522, it is stated that they took the flight 4Z037 on Friday morning. It took them 35 minutes to collect their luggage and get a taxi. They then drove at an average speed of 25.446 km per hour to reach the stadium at 10 past 7 in the morning. You are instructed to calculate the distance to the stadium and you may use the following formula. Speed equals distance divided by time. To solve this problem, we first have to calculate the time it took to drive from the airport to the stadium. Then we will use the formula to determine the total distance from the airport to the stadium using the average speed at which the taxi drove them to the stadium and the time in hours from the airport to the stadium. Now we know that if they took the flight 4Z037 from Johannesburg to Darul Islam, they would arrive at 10 past 6 in the morning. From the information in question 522, we know that it took 35 minutes to collect their luggage and get a taxi. So the time they started their journey from the airport to the stadium in the taxi is calculated as 10 past 6 in the morning plus 35 minutes, which gives us a start time of the taxi ride from the airport of 6.45 in the morning. From question 5 to 2, we know that they arrived at the stadium at 10 past 7 in the morning. So the time we took to drive from the airport to the stadium is calculated as 10 past 7 in the morning, minus quarter to seven in the morning and this would give us a drive duration of 25 minutes. Now the formula given in question 522 requires us to use the unit of speed in kilometers per hour, the distance in kilometers and the time in hours. Since we calculated the drive time duration as 25 minutes, we have to convert the 25 minutes to hours. Now we know that there are 60 minutes in one hour, so 25 minutes equals 25 divided by 60 minutes in an hour, and this equals a drive duration of 0, 0.416666 hours. Now from the formula given in question 522, we have the speed equals the distance divided by time. This formula can be rearranged mathematically to give us the distance as the subject of the formula. So we rearrange the formula to be distance equals speed multiplied by time. Substituting the values of the speed of 25,44 kilometers and the time of 0, 0,416666 hours into the distance formula, we will get a total distance from the airport to the stadium of 10,6 kilometers. In question 523, it is stated that on the flight to Darul Islam, they flew at an altitude of 35,000 feet. The air temperature decreases as the altitude increases. At an altitude of 35,000 feet, the air temperature is minus 54 degrees Celsius. You will have to calculate the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit and you may use the following formula. Degrees Fahrenheit equals 1,8 multiplied by degrees Celsius plus 32 degrees. Substituting the value of minus 54 degrees Celsius into this equation, we will get a simplified equation of minus 97,2 degrees plus 32 degrees and this gives us a temperature in degrees Fahrenheit of minus 65,2 degrees Fahrenheit. Question 5.3 consists of four maps and plans question and one probability question that were designed to assess your understanding of direction and event planning in the context of a floor plan. It is stated that the Tanzania Energy Congress took place on the 3rd and the 4th of August 2022 at the Julius Nyerere International Convention Center. 
NHAE shows the ground floor plan of the JNICC. You are also given an advertisement of the Congress. You will have to use NHAE to answer the questions that follow. In question 531, it is stated that the Salus Hall includes an auditorium with seating of 1,003 delegates. You are instructed to identify the names of the two rooms closest to the wall from the floor plan on Annex E. The Salus Hall is given the key number 1. Now the two rooms closest to the Salus Hall labeled number 1 is the Butiyama VIP room labeled number 7 and the Msasani VIP room labeled number 8. In question 532, it is stated that COVID regulations accommodated only 66,6% of full capacity of the Salus Hall. You are instructed to determine the number of delegates allowed to enter the hall during COVID. Now from question 531, it was stated that the auditorium will be able to accommodate 1,003 delegates. This will mean that the number of delegates allowed due to COVID regulation will be 66,6 over 100 multiplied by the number of delegates that can be accommodated outside COVID conditions of 1,003 and this will give us the number of delegates that can be accommodated during COVID regulation of 667,998. This will then have to be rounded down to the nearest whole person, which is 667 delegates. The reason why we round down instead of up is because if we round up, we will have too much people in the auditorium. So the only other option is to round down. If we round down, we will have less than what is allowed, but that will be okay because it will conform to COVID regulations. In question 533, you are instructed to determine the compass direction of the Mkomazi wall from the Butiyama VIP room. From the floor plan in Annex E, we see that we are given an arrow that points in the direction of north. We know that the Butiyama VIP room is located here at number 7 and the Mkomazi wall is located here at number 3. Given that the arrow points in the direction of north, west will be to the left of north. This means that the Mkomazi Hall is to the west or northwest of the Putiyama VIP room. In question 534, you are instructed to give detailed directions to a delegate that is at the main entrance that needs to join his colleagues in the Udzungwa room. From the floor plan in Annex E, the main entrance is located here and the Udzungwa room is located here at number 5. So the direction you would give to this person will be to walk in a northerly direction to the Mkomazi wall, then walk through the passage between the Mkomazi wall and the Sadani room. Take the fifth or the sixth double door on the right, you will then be in the Udzungwa room. In question 535, you are instructed to determine the probability as a fraction in simplified form of finding a conference room in the JNICC that has an area of less than 97 square meters. From the number keys given for the different areas in the JNICC in Annex E, we see that there are a total of 9 areas that can be used, and 3 of those areas are less than 97 square meters. So the probability of selecting an area that is less than 97 square meters will be 3 out of the 9 areas in the JNICC. Now simplifying this fraction of 3 over 9 by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by 3, we will get a simplified fraction of 1 over 3. So the probability of selecting an area in the JNICC of less than 97 square meters as a simplified fraction will be 1 over 3. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And if you found this video helpful, you can subscribe to be notified of more videos like this. And you can check out this video next.